Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier, and this is the kind of episode that I'm always excited to do. Contrary to the belief of some, these are the happy episodes. These are the ones that uh, I kind of focus on the things that... I get to focus on the things that really make us love Star Citizen. And... Yup, we're talking about the Caterpillar buffs. Yes, the Caterpillar has gotten a modest modest buff to the command module the armaments that were on the command module were pretty darn weak um it has been upgraded from size ones to two size threes and two size twos on a gimbal so when you're out there you're flying your caterpillar if you end up in a situation where you have to you know abandon the main hull of the ship and detach the command module and fly away it really isn't you know, an earth shattering, oh my God, they put the size sixes back on the front of the ship, guns. But it is, it is gonna be something that it's gonna be better to have than to not have. So overall, it, it's a pretty fun buff for the Caterpillar, but the good news for the Caterpillar doesn't end there. Though it isn't strictly restricted to, you know, changes to the hull or to the armament. One other thing to note is that uh, the cockpit glass has been cleaned up. It seems that sanity has prevailed. And so the idea of the soap streaked windows, which kind of felt more like an artist kind of going like, look what I can do rather than this makes sense for the universe. Those days are gone. Clear skies and clear glass for the Caterpillar owners. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. So when you're out there and you're operating your Caterpillar and you're looking through these glass windows, you will see what you're trying to look at rather than going like, ooh, there's detail on the glass. Yay. You know, it's baby steps, but it is definitely something that is going to be, I think it's going to be a minor quality of life fix that you're quickly going to forget about, but it's an important one. And it's an important step in the right direction. Overall, it all is. Now, would I like to see the Caterpillar further buffed a little bit in terms of armament? Yes, I would. I feel that it is not unreasonable to put the guns back on the front of the ship rather than the parking sensors. But once again, baby steps. Now, it doesn't stop with the Caterpillar. One other ship got some very noteworthy buffs, which I think is probably going to have some of the owners excited, though overall, you know... I, much like the Caterpillar, it's a step in the right direction, but I don't think it totally solves the problem. But I'm willing to kind of wait and see how this pans out because it's a ship that I don't own anymore, but I w originally was very excited about. The Xeon Scout. Its size 3s have been up to size 4s, so it's got two size 4s on the ship now. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. We'll have to see how that pans out, but definitely I, I think most Xeon Scout owners would uh, would be very pleased with that change. Indicative of more changes in the future? Who knows? Maybe this could also lead to a little bit of an upgun for the Santok Yai, but we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But the good news for the Caterpillar, I think is a step in the right direction. Overall flight handling and atmosphere is decent. Um, I think you may experience some difficulty. I certainly did. And I think that has to do with the implementation of the virtual joystick or VJoy. It's a little off. Um, it's a little bit off center, so it's not quite performing the way we would like it to. And I mean, overall, the whole landing and approach system is, I think, a bit of a question mark for a lot of people. It's like, why didn't you make it so it just guided you all the way into the hangar? Or why not just, when you're at regulated landing sites, just kind of hand it over to autopilot? I think a fair argument could be made for either of those two solutions, but it is what it is, right? It's what we got to deal with. But there was an added thing that kind of affects the caterpillar and it's not a direct caterpillar change but something that kind of changes i think it would be best classified as a quality of life upgrade for the caterpillar now i i of course own the pirate edition of the caterpillar when the caterpillar came back up on sale and it came up with two space bikes i picked this up this is 
my core game package. So this is not a ship that I would ever be in any rush to uh, get rid of. But one of the things that I have kind of lamented about and I've been excited to see was the fact that currently you can't, or previously, you couldn't land the Caterpillar at Grim Hex, which is, you know, one of the major pirate hubs in the Stanton system. And having a pirate edition Caterpillar that can't go to a, a great big hub like that and land and transfer cargo and all that felt out of place. Now, we knew that additional landing pads were going to be built into Grim Hex. Now, was that going to lead to an abandonment of the exterior ones? We hope so. Because, you know, seeing ships wink in and out of existence is, of course, immersion breaking. But the landing bays at Grim Hex are indeed present. They are there. They are functional. You can now land a caterpillar at Grim Hex and you can summon a caterpillar at Grim Hex if you own said ship. Now, this will, of course, ab apply to a broader range of ships, but it just it increases the livability of Grim Hex. One of the things that I complained about recently was the changes to the smuggling missions. You know, this is not something that I, um, I'm too happy about. I'm, I'm willing to kind of hold off a little bit on blasting until, uh, until we find out that those numbers are final. But if they are indeed final, Having something like this at Grim Hex, it opens up certain doors for a ship like the Caterpillar, certainly. Maybe smuggling in that form is dead, but maybe smuggling freeform without the benefit of a mission to tell you where to go and how to do it, where you might have to go to other unregulated landing sites and purchase things like alcohol or food and then bring them to Grim Hex to supply the residents of this station, you know, especially if you have a larger cargo ship that can now make the journey. Maybe that is the future of smuggling. Maybe that is the future of high profit smuggling and the basic missions are, you know, maybe the changes are to kind of get you out of that mode and to get you more into the free mode of trading and running risks, landing at unregulated landing sites. You know, maybe we can reinforce that saying that, you know, these sites haven't paid taxes or duties on those goods and so you're kind of running you know you're running a you know in the gray area or not so gray area of delivering these goods without you know government oversight or something like that you know whatever reasons when systems come online that can kind of support and reinforce that that's the reason why you're doing it it would be cool it doesn't have to be huge profit margins but certainly something that keeps you in the spirit of the universe and in the spirit of the game and what you're doing is not a bad thing and this is just this is a grand addition to grim hex this is a fantastic addition to grim hex and i'm overjoyed by it i'm overjoyed by its existence it, i yeah, I, I am just happy. I originally thought, you know, when I did that video a few months ago where I glitched into Grim Hex and I kind of showed you guys where I thought maybe the hangar and the landing sites would be. No, it is in fact these doors that we had seen previously, except they're all lit up. They're landing hangars, much like the landing ha hangars you would find on New Babbage or Area 18, but they've been redecorated. They've been made a little bit more dingy and a little bit more dirty. With the new flight at system, the ships are a little bit delicate to get into the uh, landing bays. It's, it requires a bit of a deft touch. And the auto landing system was not really functioning for me. I activated it right at the last moment because I'm not sure if you could make it out in the footage, but you could see that there were people walking on the landing pad while you're trying to land a ship. And I didn't want to get crime stat if I accidentally there. You can see them there. I didn't want to get crime stat if I accidentally crushed one. So I just figured I would hand it off to the autopilot. But the ship, um, it's, it's strangely enough, it just got locked into the autopilot. And so I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. You know, I couldn't move the ship and I was trying. So finally, I just kind of cut the engines <laughs> and dropped the ship on the landing pad. No, no harm, no foul. Apparently no one killed. But yeah, it's great to be here, to be in Grim Hex and to be able to land your Caterpillar at this location. It's awesome. It's just awesome. 
I'm gonna try to explore um, maybe a little bit of that kind of freeform smuggling. Now, the mission availability is once again these kind of uh, smuggling missions in stages which are available from Grim Hex and presumably New Babbage if I ever really went there with any frequency, it would be there as well. So kind of a cool thing, kind of a, a kind of a cool change, but it doesn't just stop there. I mean, Grim Hex itself has received a number of upgrades and changes. Some of them we were able to anticipate recently with changes to the uh, the main lobby entrance of Grim Hex. They have kind of altered where you call up your ships. So if you're used to the old system, it's it's nothing you have to worry about. You don't really have to go down a lot of corridors to go digging for it. You know, normally you would walk out, turn to your left. Uh oh, now it's just dumpsters. Everything else is pretty much the same. I haven't really gone outside to look at the landing pads yet, but here's where you summon up your ships now. And here are all the elevators to take you to those hangars. So that that's a that's a big deal, you know. Not having to watch ships blink into existence out on the landing pads, certainly fantastic. Though, you know, the landing pad thing, it's kind of a mystery how that ended up in the, uh, in the truck stops, but everywhere else they've been kind of getting away from it. I'm not sure if those landing pads are just gonna be like refueling spots now where you can just drop your ship, refuel, and then take off again, and no longer spawn ships at those. That's a good way to kind of fix the problem, but we'll have to wait and see how things change for those stations. But for Grim Hex, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I mean, the rest of it is pretty much as you would remember it. Wallace Clem is still down there skulking around in the basement. And, you know, it seems like the guy who sold clothes in the uh, main concourse area of Grim Hex it looks like he's cleaned up his act. He's no longer lying on the floor and tripping out. He's actually, uh, you know, seemingly conscious and running his business. <laughs> um, but the gambling area, the gambling area is pretty interesting. So right where, you know, we kind of thought that there was something was going to be put there. If you remember down at the end of this catwalk, it was blocked off and there used to be like some programming textbooks on the ground. Well, now this has been opened up and yeah, it is. This is where you go and you check out the races. It's suitably seedy and um, I don't know, man, it's 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 kind of the the slight tragedy of star citizen in that the art team is just so many steps ahead of the programmers that you get to see all this great stuff and you're like oh my god this is great and then it's like but where are the races it's like well we haven't gotten there yet you know ocs server meshing blah 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 you know we're working on that stuff which is all very critical stuff but it's like the arts the art team is just so many miles ahead of them that we end up having this stuff and we're like what do we do with it <laughs> it's cool but what do we do with it you know and this is another one of those unfortunate situations but holds a lot of promise you know something definitely to get excited about so with that I'm going to leave this video on a positive note. There are some other changes to other ships that you know, we don't care about. But the important stuff, you know, the Caterpillar getting a slight buff. Like to see things go a little further. Going to continue to make that case in the future. But overall, Caterpillar in a good place. And definitely aimed in the right direction. And Grim Hex looking a lot more interesting i'm gonna have to explore some options with this but anyways that's it for the video i hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching thank you for watching so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in star citizen squadron 42 development please follow please follow please follow us on our social media channels see you soon